Year 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of Tybalt from Romeo and Juliet in preparation for your AQA English Literature exam. Who is Tybalt? Tybalt is Juliet's cousin. After he kills Mercutio in a street brawl, Romeo stabs him, which causes Romeo to be banished from Verona. Mercutio, who hates Tybalt, gives him the catty nickname, the Prince of Cats, and it totally fits. While Romeo can sometimes remind us of a bouncy and overega puppy, Tybalt tends to stalk around proudly attacking anybody. And we get a hint of that when his uncle, Lord Capulet, prevents him from beating up Romeo for crashing the Capulet's ball. But Tybalt promises to fight Romeo later. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitterest gall. He's violent and quick to draw his sword when he feels his pride has been injured. Once drawed, his sword is something to be feared, and he loathes the Montagues. As you can see, I've just put a couple of quotations in red there. If this is an unseen exam and we don't have the play, we must remember quotations. Short quotations are easier to remember. We can use one-word quotations, but things like Prince of Cats, try and remember the shorter quotations. If, if you're trying to remember a longer quotation, then obviously you're going to have to keep going over it in your revision. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall. So you might remem remember the end of that quote there, convert to bitterest gall. I'm going to go into more depth about him and the scenes he's in after this summing up of his character. A little bit more detail about him basically then. He is the antagonist. So he is the opposite to our main character, Romeo. He is the villain of the play, isn't he? Now, if we're looking at Tybalt in more detail, we should look at his name. Now, the name Tybalt is a folk tale about a fox who was cunning. And in this story, I think he's called Reynard, there is a character called Tybalt, who is a sly, cunning and argumentative cat. Now, at the time the play was written in Elizabethan society, they would therefore connect this cat to the name of Tybalt. So when he's first introduced, they will have ideas about what type of character he is and he lives up to them, doesn't he? He is quite sly and he's definitely argumentative. And Mercutio calls him the Prince of Cats. So there's another link. So make sure you get that in your revision. The name Tybalt is a cat from a folk tale about a fox. And in the story, the cat is sly, cunning and argumentative. Okay. So again, the connotations of his name are that he's going to be confrontational and aggressive. It's exactly what he's like. In the play, Tybalt plays a prominent role in both a thematic scheme, i.e. violence and fate and tragedy, but also in the ultimate outcome, i.e., the deaths of the lovers. Okay. Tybalt is the instigator of a chain of reactions which change the course of the tragedy and sending it into a collision with fate. Tybalt's uncontrollable vengeance and skill as a fighter and sense of calculate pride are admirable in their own ways but lead Tybalt to his eventual death the hands of Romeo. Quite a lot being said there, so make sure you pause the video and get the notes necessary. More detail about him before we look at scenes. He likes to speak in rhyming couplets, okay? He likes to speak in rhyming couplets, friend, uh, for example, shall and goal. Um, and it makes him sound menacing and it makes him sound argumentative. Now, aside from the vendetta between the Capulets and the Montagues, there's no real explanation for his aggressive behaviour. And that is why I suppose to some degree he remains one-dimensional as the play progresses because he does not change. It seems possible that he's eager to fight because he wants to defend his reputation as the toughest of the Capulets. But also it might be that he just likes to fight. 
But you've also got to take in, into consideration loyalty when you're talking about Tybalt. He is loyal beyond words and he honours the family rivalry. He will defend his family to the death and that's what he does. So whilst he has many um, negative traits, he is loyal. Going to move on to foils now and Shakespeare often uses foils and foils are two characters who juxtapose each other so the audience can see their disparities. Juxtapose obviously there means contrasts, so two characters that contrast with one another. And in this instance, it's Benvolio and Tybalt, isn't it? And some degree, Romeo and Tybalt. So Benvolio's name is synonymous with good and benevolence, whereas Tybalt is linked to a sly, cunning cat. Where Benvolio is your peacemaker, Tybalt is aggressive and eager to fight. I've got more detail coming up now. Tybalt needed to act as a foil to all of the prudent and reasonable capulets of the play. He has no inclination for peace and spends much of his time baiting Montagues into battle, which makes him a perfect match with the witty Mercutio. What makes Tybalt so intriguing is his close relationship with Juliet. Although they are cousins, it's important for us to understand that their relationship is much closer. Juliet is devastated by the death of Tybalt, much like she would be if her brother had died. It isn't until Juliet realises that Tybalt would have killed Romeo that she begins to calm down about Tybalt's death. Shakespeare almost uses Tybalt to show that this family rivalry continued to be strong in Verona. Tybalt's role in the play. Tybalt enters the stage during the fight between the servants of the Capulets and the Montagues. Benvolio, a friend of the Montagues, is trying to stop the fight. Instead, Tybalt starts fighting with Benvolio. The situation gets so out of control that the Prince of Verona arrives to break it up. Tybalt spots Romeo at a Capulet party. Furious at this invasion, he wants to fight with Romeo right then and there. And Lord Capulet angrily orders him not to ruin the party. Tybalt obeys Lord Capulet, but he swears to punish Romeo at the earliest opportunity. Tybalt looks for Romeo and finds Benvolio and Mercutio. He trades some insults with them before Romeo shows up. Tybalt purposely tries to provoke Romeo into a fight. Romeo refuses. Mercutio challenges Tybalt to a duel instead. Romeo tries to stop them from fighting and Tybalt wounds Mercutio, killing him. Romeo then challenged Tybalt to a duel and kills Tybalt. Act 1, scene 1 is Tybalt's introduction during the quarrel, the fight. And he says, What art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon thy death. On the right there, you've got a translation. What, you've pulled out your sword to fight with these worthless servants? Turn around, Benvolio, and look at the man who's going to kill you. So instantly, Tybalt questions the masculinity of the servants by calling them hinds, which is a female deer. I'm going to go into more detail about that in just a second. But also, if you look at Tybalt's language, it's aggressive, isn't it? Um, because he's telling Buenvoli he's going to kill him. And he's insulting the servants. I'm going to analyse that now in more depth. So heartless hinds. This image used by Tybalt here to describe the servants is very critical. He's comparing the servants to female deer. The word hind refers specifically to the female of the species. Tybalt thus characterises the servants as being weak and womanly. Now remember at the time the play was written, women didn't have a voice in society. They didn't have any power, any rights. His use of the word heartless compounds this effect as he is punning on the word heartless and a heart is a male deer. With this phrase, 
Tybalt disdains the servants as being feeble, unmanly and wicked. But at the same time, he is mocking Benvolio for being embroil embroiled in a quarrel between what he sees as weak and feeble creatures. And he goes on, Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon thy death. He is provoking Benvolio to fight here by jeering him, by implying that he is not a real man until he turns and fights with a worthy opponent, i.e. Tybalt himself. Don't forget also in the imagery of Heartless Hinds you've got alliteration as well, which again um, it won't hurt to mention. As I said earlier, Benvolio is the peacekeeper and he tries to keep the peace here. When he claims, I do, but keep the peace, put up thy sword or manage it to part these men with me. But Tybalt, being the character he is, doesn't want to hear. And he says, what, drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word as I hate hell. All Montagues and thee have at thee, coward. Again, your translation is there. What, you take out your sword and then talk about peace? I hate the word peace like I hate hell. All Montagues and you, let's go at it, coward. So, if we're looking again at Tybalt, he questions him. He questions Benvolio. He's, he's saying what? You're here to keep the peace, but you've got your sword out and you're waving it around like that. You're talking about peace, but you've got your sword out. And we have the repeated word hate here, don't we? And I suppose, to a certain degree, it almost sums up Tybalt's character within the play because he goes around hating the Montagues, which is obviously why he wants to fight them all the time. And hatred and hate is a good word because I suppose that's one of his issues, isn't it? Carrying this feud around with him everywhere it goes. And notice he uses Montague and Hell in the same phrase and that shows you exactly what he thinks of them. He hates Helen, he hates the Montagues. It's like almost a comparison there. And then, much like the nature of his character, he attacks Benvolio saying, you know, I'm ready to fight. And then we get the stage directions after that, saying that they do fight. So your introduction to Tybalt is that, one, he lives up to the name of this sly, aggressive, argumentative cat from the story about the fox, the, fo the folk tale story I mentioned earlier. But what impression do we have of him as an audience? He's coming across straight away as your villain. He is an instigator. He is fighting. And even when Benvolio attempts to keep the peace, Tybalt kind of wants it to carry on. We then move to Act 1, Scene 5, where we have the Capulet Ball. And as we know, Romeo and his friends have snuck in. Romeo wants to see Rosaline at the ball, but he falls in love with Juliet, as we know. And Tybalt hears Romeo talking and knows immediately. And he says, This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What day's the slave? Come hither, covered with an antic face, to flee and scorn our solemnity. Now by the stock and honour of my skin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Your translation? I can tell by his voice that this man is a Montagu. Get me my sword, boy. What does this peasant dare to come here, with his face covered by a mask, to sneer at and scorn our celebration? Now, by the honour of our family, I do not consider it a crime to kill him. Once again, as I said earlier, he's one-dimensional, so he's exactly the same in Act 1, Scene 5 as he is in Act 1, Scene 1. He's ready to fight. Look, fetch me my rabia, boy. There's a quick quotation we can remember for our exam. And Tibble kind of misses the point here, doesn't he? Because he's implying that Romeo's put a mask on to hide his face so he can go and laugh at the Capulets when in actual fact he has gone there seeking a lady, hasn't he? Um, and then to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. So there's the loyalty of Tybalt again, the fact that he will defend his family to the very end. So if we can remember again for your short quotation, to strike him dead. And if you look now by the stock and honour of my cane, it's this idea that he will be loyal, he will protect his family. Again, if we're looking closely at his language as well, fetch me my rabia, come hither. He's very commanding and that's, I suppose, where the aggression comes as well. 
He wants his sword pretty much immediately and he wants to kill Romeo, much like earlier on he wanted to kill Benvolio. And we know Lord Capula tells him, you aren't causing a fight at my party, absolutely not. And it's Lord Capula that actually says that Romeo is known as a gentleman in Verona. And Tybalt, you know, he isn't having any of it, is he? Uncle, this is a Montague hour four, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn our solemnity this night. And your translation again. Uncle, this man is a Montague, our enemy. He's a scoundrel who's come here out of spite to mock our party. So again, if we can remember, this is a Montague, our four. Good quotation, because as I said earlier, Tybalt is kind of the character who wants to continue the feud. Because Lord Capulet doesn't. Lord Capulet has told him not to fight and almost defended Romeo by saying he's known as a gentleman. But Tybalt won't let it lie. Tybalt won't let it go. So Uncle, this is a Montague our four, shows us that this feud will be continued by Tybalt. And we know it will because of what happens in Act 3, Scene 1. So this line here is almost a foreshadowing of the events that are to come. He calls Romeo a villain and there's a huge irony there, isn't there? Dramatic irony in the sense that the audience, we know already that Tybalt's the villain, yet he's calling Romeo it. So there's a huge use of irony there by Shakespeare. And again, it's the fact that he sees the Montagues and Romeo as the, as the enemy, as the villain. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. So again, short quotation, I'll not endure him. I'm not going to tolerate him. He showed up at our party. Again, you know, Lord Capulet is the one to tell him to pack it in. And he shows no re real respect for Lord Capulet, actually, because whilst he agrees, he does threaten to carry this on later, which is your next line. Patience perforce with willful column eating makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall. So there you, there you go. The combination of forced patience and pure rage is making my body tremble. I leave here now, but Romeo's prank, which seems so sweet to him now, will turn bitter to him later. That there sums up the fact that Tybalt, as a consequence of pure rage, acts. He's a character, I suppose, who acts without really thinking of the consequences, trying to fight Benvolio. And then the prince has to come in and, and kind of tell everybody off, if you like, doesn't he? Attempt to fight Romeo in the middle of the party, not considering the consequences of his actions. Trying to fight Romeo later and killing, killing Mercutio. Again, not thinking of the consequences of his actions. He's very impulsive. And in Act 1, Scene 5, he, he uses rhyming couplets. As I, I did mention that earlier, I think. And it shows his overconfidence, his arrogance, and the fact that he's argumentative. Now, this is interesting because the rhyming couplets will change later. Um when he starts to speak in blank verse, all right? Now, if you're aiming, obviously, for a higher grade, we need that, we need Shakespeare's language, so I'll say that again. Here, in Act 1, Scene 5, there's a use of the rhyming couplet, which shows overconfidence, arrogance, and the fiery side of Tybalt. Whereas when we get to Act 3, Scene 1, his language changes to blank verse. We'll obviously discuss that when we get to Act 3, Scene 1. A summing up then of Act 1, Scene 5. The threat of violence immediately, immediately interrupts the romantic atmosphere of Act 1, Scene 5 when Tybalt recognises Romeo's voice and wants to kill him then and there. Remember, Romeo and Juliet have just met each other. They have just confessed that they like each other, they've kissed each other. And then Tybalt recognises Romeo. That is not an accident by William Shakespeare. That is part of the structure, isn't it? That this wonderful romantic moment is confronted with Tybalt. And I suppose it's a foreshadowing of the tragedy. 
although forced to accept Capulet's decision as head of the family to allow Romeo to stay. Tybalt utters a threat that indicates that he will disregard Capulet's command. In presenting these complex social interactions in a public space, the play explores not only the conflict between the two feuding families, but also the conflict within the families and across the generations. All the intertwined motivations become a problem for Romeo and Juliet's newfound love. Fate is working against them. They've just met and then Tybalt sees Romeo and we know that he threatens to fight him later and therefore it's like Act 3, Scene 1 is a direct result of this. Lord Capulet proves that he knows the nature of his nephew when he says, God shall mend my soul, you'll make a mutiny among my guests. He is accusing Tybalt of wanting to pursue an opportunity to fight, to improve his own reputation of being a man. And Lord Capulet insults Tybalt when he says you are a saucy boy. The word saucy, he is implying that Tybalt is insolent. Okay. The use of boy suggests that Tybalt is immature about the situation. And I suppose he's immature in all of the situations we see him in. He's not used in the play that much, but in the instances he is, Act 1, Scene 1, Act 1, Scene 5, Act 3, Scene 1, he is very immature and, he, and his only reaction to everything is to fight. Tybalt previously says that he will kill Romeo to protect his family honour. By contradicting his uncle, Tybalt displays his lack of respect for his uncle's authority. He puts his own needs and wants before his uncle's command. Therefore proving that he does not want to kill Romeo to uphold his family's reputation, but for his own satisfaction. Tybalt eventually consents to let Romeo alone, but cautions his uncle. I've said this quote a few times because it's really important. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitterest gall. And this is again foreshadowing of the future because he is warning his uncle and the audience that he will seek vengeance and that he will get his revenge for this intrusion. And these last words leave the audience expecting the worst from Tybalt. This scene now makes it inevitable in the minds of the audience that Tybalt will have something to do with the tragedy. We get to Act 3, Scene 1, which is arguably the turning point in the play in terms of quickly leading to the lovers' deaths. And Tybalt turns up. Follow me close, for I will speak to them, gentlemen. Good evening, a word with one of you. Your translation, follow me closely, I'll talk to them. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'd like to have a word with one of you. Now, as I said before, he speaks in blank verse. Earlier, he spoke in rhyming couplets to show his arrogance and his overconfidence, and now it changes to bl blank verse. He then switches to prose as the scene develops and this shows that he's being wound up and he's being drawn into an argument and the change in language shows the change in his mood. Okay, so we've got rhyme, a rhyming couplets in Act 1, Scene 5 into blank verse at the start of Act 3, Scene 1 into prose. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. So he says, you'll find me ready enough to do that, sir, if you give me a reason. So straightforward translations there in terms of uh, Tybalt's character. But the key thing is the blank verse into the prose, the change in his mood, the change in his character via language. Tybalt then accuses Mercutio. Mercutio without consort is with Romeo, i.e. seeing he hangs out with Romeo, and Mercutio takes this offensively. 
Tibble carries on. Boy, they shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. Boy, your words can't excuse the harm you've done to me, so now turn and draw your sword. Once again, much like at one scene five, when he said, fetch me my rapier, he is now asking someone to to um, have a duel, a duel with him, a fight. He uses boy as an insult, obviously, and it works. And clearly, again, turn and draw, quick quotation to remember again. Boy is a one-word quotation to show that he's insulting other people, almost speaking down to them, being offensive. And then turn and draw, almost sums up his entire character. He's ready to fight Mercutio. He's ready to fight Romeo. Anybody, yeah? He is a symbol of the Capulet's younger generation. And he also represents the constant fight and hate between the Capulets and the Montagues. If we just once again revise his most important quotations, because obviously we're going to have to remember them, here we are. Act 1, Scene 5. This by his voice should be a Montague, fetch me my rabia boy. So again, for trying to remember quotations, fetch me my rabia. What day is the slave come hither, covered with an antic face to flee and scorn our solemnity by the stock and honour of my kin to show his loyalty, to strike him dead. I hold it not a sin, to strike him dead. The violence, the aggressiveness of his character, the impulsiveness of re being ready to fight. Okay. And at the bottom there, just very quickly, when Tybalt discovers that Romeo has crashed the Capulet's party, his first response is to start a fight. He is easily provoked. Next key quotation from Act 1, Scene 5. Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe. Remember what I said about he seems to be the only character that wants the feud to continue. This is a Montague, our foe. And he's referring to them as the enemy. To a certain extent, he represents the theme of violence and the, 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 the actual feud. And of course, we have the exchange between Tybalt and Romeo in Act 3, Scene 1, which I've uploaded here. Tybalt says, Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this thou art a villain. The irony of him calling Romeo a villain, remember, and the dramatic irony for the audience because we realise that it's actually Tybalt who is the villain within this play. Romeo responds, Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Mm -hmm. Villain am I none, therefore farewell, I say thou knowest me not. And basically Romeo here is saying that that he loves Tybalt. He has a reason to love him. That lets him put aside his rage. And he, that he's not a villain. And then he says, you don't know who I am. Tybalt obviously responds once again, trying to insult him with boy. They shall not excuse the injury that injuries that thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. Again, key, look at that, turn and draw. Summon up the character of Tybalt. Basically, he says, boy, your words can't excuse the harm you've done to me. So now turn and draw your sword. I suppose it's very much over-exaggerated here, isn't it? The harm you've done to me. What harm has he actually done? Yeah, okay, he snuck into the ball. So it, again, it's Tibble not really needing an excuse to start a fight and very being impulsive and reacting without thinking about the consequences. Romeo once again protests. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise. Till thou shalt know the reason of my love, and so good Capulet, which name I tend as dearly as my own be satisfied. And Romeo he is basically saying, I disagree, I've never done you harm. I love you more than you can understand, until you know the reason why I love you. And so good Capulet, which is the name I love like my own name, you should be satisfied with what I say. And that is, I suppose, when Mercutio jumps in and says, oh, calm, dishonourable, vile submission, and goes to fight Tybalt. And when, also when he calls him the King of Cats. Don't forget the King of Cats is a key quote, summing up the connotations we hold with Tybalt in his name. And as we know, they then fight. To sum up, 
Tibbal is a violent character. At the very start of the play, he gets involved with the street fight. He later sees Romeo and his friends at the Capulet party and threatens to fight with them there. Capulet stops him, but later he challenges Romeo to a duel. When Romeo refuses to fight, Mercutio steps up and ends up being slain by Tybalt. Angry at the death of his close friend, Romeo then fights with Tybalt and kills him. Tybalt is the reason Romeo is banished from Verona. Key piece of information. Because if Romeo gets banished and then the friar has to come up with a plan of Juliet appearing dead and him sending their letter to Romeo, which never gets there. So this is a key piece of information that quickly leads to the downfall and the death of Romeo and Juliet. His attributes as a character are that he's aggressive, impulsive, but that he holds a lot of honour and a lot of loyalty towards his family. Writing about Tybalt. In writing about Tybalt, don't forget to look at him in contrast to Romeo and Benvolio. Unlike their efforts to make peace, Tybalt takes any opportunity to use violence to keep the feud between the families alive. No tower at the Capulet feast, even Lord Capulet is benevolent towards Romeo's presence and gives positive reports of him. He has to actively prevent Tybalt from taking violent action there and then, showing what a powerful and unpredictable force he is. Tybalt represents the underlying violence and vengeful nature of the... Well, I'm never going to pronounce that. I'm out of the Society of Verona. But he also has another dramatic function in the play. Think about how the consequences of his death affect Romeo and drive forward the pace of the action to follow. It could be argued that he is a catalyst quickly propelling Romeo and Juliet to their deaths. A possible conclusion then. Again, it's just a possibility. You don't have to use it. It's just a suggestion because you obviously will have your own ideas. Overall, Tybalt represents the hostility that lies below the surface in this divided society. More specifically, his death contrasts with those of Romeo and Juliet. Tybalt's death ensures that more deaths will follow, whereas the lover's deaths ensures that the killing comes to an end. His personality shows a lack of responsibility for others, but in fact, a rather shallow and undeveloped character who is one-dimensional, one dimensional, even as the play progresses. As an audience, we are only shown one side of Tybalt, a villain. This contrasts with the lovers and truly sets the tragedy in motion. If Verona is a divided society, Tybalt is the one man who wishes it to remain so. Okay, I hope this video has been useful. Um, go back and pause and things like that. Remember the connotations of Tybalt's name and also that his language changes from rhyming couplets in sections in section five to blank verse to prose, which is key information there. I hope this has been useful. Good luck in your AQA English Literature exam. If you need any more of my videos, just type my name into YouTube, which is Stacey Ray, and that's S-T-A-C-E-Y, and Ray is R-A-A-Y.